Good morning, everybody. My name is Sarah. I'm the Real Simple Mama. The girls are hunting for roaches under the treat can, but we have a serious thing to talk about today. We're going to start doing a discussion on two medical conditions that can happen with your chicken. One is happening with one of mine right now, and it has to do with sour crop and impacted crop. So let's start that discussion. Good morning. So please forgive the air conditioning sounds. It's over 100 degrees every day in South Texas. So that's kind of a constant noise in the background for right now. So we are going to be talking about Minerva McGonagall, who is the black and white hen in the center of your shot right now. And her crop is just gigantic and disgusting. And so we're going to talk about what she's got going on and how we can fix it. So firstly, if you're not aware of the way a chicken's digestive system works, it doesn't work like ours. Chickens don't have spit and they don't have teeth to grind up their food and they don't have a stomach like we do with stomach acid. So theirs is more of a mechanical breakdown of food instead of using chemical like stomach acid. So chickens will swallow food whole or they'll peck it into peckable, swallowable sized bites, right? And it goes from the beginning of their digestive tract, which is their beak, and they swallow it and it goes into a spot called the crop. And the crop, you can see, I've, I've talked about this in other videos, and if you're not sure how that chicken's digestive system works, certainly go look it up so that you understand what's going on. The crop is sort of like a little balloon. We're talking about, again, about Minerva right there, whose balloon is like way too big and distended. So the balloon is sort of like the holding place where food goes first. That's the first drop-off spot. Hi, Gracie. Um, after that, Gracie says good morning, everybody. After that, it will go down into the gizzard, which is their equivalent of a stomach, and that's where the rest of the breakdown happens, which is why your chickens need grit. Their food starts to get broken down a little bit, but then the gizzard is where everything gets broken up with all those little pieces of rocks and pebbles and grit. In a condition like sour crop or impacted crop, they're two slightly different things, but a lot of the treatment is the same. And the good news is when a chicken has this, it can happen fairly commonly, and it's not like a death sentence or anything like that. When a chicken has sour crop, it means that that crop, that holding balloon has not emptied fully, which is the natural process, right? The food stays in there for a little while and then it goes down into the gizzard and it, get, it finishes getting digested. In a sour crop, the crop is still squishy. It's soft. It feels like, you know, a half empty water balloon. It's very soft and squishy, but it means that stuff in the crop is getting sour because it's not getting emptied. In other words, it's starting to rot or it's starting to ferment. Now, in this case, you can see Minerva McGonagall. I know that they're hiding behind this can. Let me see if I can move it. They're going to go nuts because there's roaches under here. Come on, girls. Tick, 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 tick. But it's very soft and squishy, but you can also tell that she's still wanting to eat because she's not feeling full because the food's not going down into her gizzard. So the main ways that you can check and see if your chicken has a crop problem, I mean, first of all, just visually, right? It would be very, very obvious. The other thing to keep in mind is like this breed in particular, this is a good example. If you're trying to figure out is this sour crop or impacted crop, don't check your chickens at night. Or look at them at night, but don't diagnose them at night. That would be better. Because just like us, they've been eating all day, right? Like chickens are grazers. They've been snacking and eating little things all day. So they're super full. That crop is super full to bursting by the time they go to sleep. But chickens don't eat all night, right? So it should be emptying out all night. And by the time the chicken wakes up in the morning and they come out, it should be empty. So... I noticed last night that Minnie's crop was really super full, like looked disgusting. And so I just made a mental note. I need to run out here really early this morning before she can eat a lot, or you can grab them off the roost in the morning or whatever you need to do and make sure that it emptied like normal. It hasn't. So the next step, that would be the first step, right? To diagnose your chicken with sour crop or impacted crop. The first step is you check them in the morning after, you know, normally their systems would be empty, right? And you double check, do they still have a really full crop? She does. Okay, so now, is it sour crop or is it impacted crop? Sour crop and impacted crop, they, they usually are caused by almost exactly the same thing. The difference is that sour crop is going to, the crop is going to feel soft, and yes, you need to like push on it a little bit. Impacted crop is going to feel a lot more firm. I will also say, if I had to choose one, I would say that sour crop is less serious. Impacted crop is more serious. So what's happened is you've got the crop and then like I said, you know, it's going down into the gizzard, right? The food is transferring from A to B. And when that happens, if it gets jammed up by something, 
then it can't do that. So what we're gonna do now is talk about treatments. So here's what you need to do. With sour crop, it's pretty straightforward. With impacted crop, it's gonna be a lot of the same things, but you just need to understand that you may have to do something more invasive. Sour crop, hello, sweetheart my sweet darling sour crop you can usually treat at home hopefully we'll be able to get this resolved within two days or so so i'm going to isolate Minnie. i'm going to lock her up just so that i can control what she's eating and drinking i can watch all of her poop you know all of that stuff so she's going to get isolated for a day or two you can put a couple of different things to change the chemical balance in their body and to help that crop get cleared up um, for impacted crop in particular, you could use a lot of crushed raw garlic in their water. Don't worry about dosing it, just make it strong, it's fine. Um, you can also use apple cider vinegar and you need to have the raw apple cider vinegar. This is the one that looks all cloudy and like nasty, like it has stuff in the bottom of the bottle. I use Bragg's. Um, in the summer months, I don't give it in my chicken's water very often because it can affect um, their ability to lay eggs when it's hot or to have like good eggshells when it's hot. Ta-da! But um, you can add that and you use one tablespoon per gallon of water. So I'm gonna give Minnie her own water. She's gonna get isolated to haha, -ha, where you have to drink this water because you're locked up in a little crate. And she's gonna get raw garlic and, a and ACV or that apple cider vinegar in her water. The only thing with that is if you don't clean out your water every day, you have to clean out the water at least once a day because it'll get nasty and it'll leave like a residue in there. So I'm gonna do that. I can give her Greek yogurt that has that good, we, my kids and I call it the good bugs, like good probiotics that are in it. Um, and then she can eat, but you have to remember to Minerva, she feels like she should be hungry. She's not feeling full because that food's not going down and getting digested. Does that make sense? Um, it's kind of like if you eat a whole bunch of food and then you just spit it back out, your body's like, dude, I haven't gotten any nutrition yet. What are you doing? So hopefully she's going to be able to pass this on her own with impacted crop. You have a slightly different problem because what is gotten in their crop, what they have eaten has basically gotten hard. Um, not hard like a rock, but it's gotten firm to the point that it's like, it's again, it's jamming up that crop so it can't go down through. And I apologize for the focus there. So with impacted crop, you can do those same things. I mean, honestly, everything that I just told you, isolating the bird, putting them in a calm place, um, giving them apple cider vinegar in their water, giving them <laughs> garlic in their water, all of those things, there's no risk to doing that. Like, honestly there's like zero chance that that's going to hurt your bird. So you could do that with impacted crop as well. Um, with impacted crop, and we're going to talk about why this happens here in just a second. With impacted crop though, and I've never had to do this and it kind of freaks me out. Um, if you did have impacted crop, again, where the crop is really big, but you feel it and it feels very firm, it feels more like clay uh, than like a squishy water balloon. I apologize for the plane. With impacted crop, again, you're hoping that you can break things up enough that it will start draining on its own. But if it doesn't, there have been cases in impacted crop where you have to take that chicken to a vet. Or there is a way that you can actually get like a scalpel or a little blade and you can cut an incision in the right spot and you can actually like remove almost like doing a c-section on their crop um, where it doesn't go down and out the natural way but you physically make an incision um, of course that's way more invasive that's a long recovery period you've got to keep that wound from getting like dirty and infected and all of that stuff so impacted crop you don't want to deal with um, but like I said it is possible that you can that you might be able to fix it if it hasn't gotten too serious. So yet another reason for you to be doing medical checks and going out and looking at your chickens as often as you can. I know we can't all the time and no way am I here to make you feel guilty. But hopefully if you have these things in the back of your mind, you know, keep Greek yogurt on hand, keep fresh garlic on hand. I mean, why wouldn't you, right? Keep that apple cider vinegar on hand. I'll show you my bottle here in just a minute. I'm gonna go grab it. That'll be at the very end of the video. So lastly, if you're still here, Let's talk about why do these things happen? Um, I mean, first of all, let, I mean, let's look at our darling birds, right? Like our little fluff butts, they're outside all day, right? Like they're out and they're digging around and they're scratching. And, you know, when we moved into this home, this place was basically just rocks and weeds. But I have no idea, you know, what was here before we were. And so you have to be very just conscientious. Chickens do really have a good intuition most of the time about like, I know the shape of this leaf is nightshade, for example. Like I'm not going to eat leaves off of a pepper plant or off of a tomato plant because I know it's going to kill me. So usually on site, just visually, chickens are good at looking at something and being like, I'm not going to eat that. They're not like your toddler who is, you know, constantly like, it seems like they're just kamikaze trying to just put everything in their mouth. But the reason that this happens 
um, is that, you know, there was something, oh, Lacey's going to do a circus trick too. Ta-da! The reason that this happens is something has jammed up that crop, right? And they don't have a disposal system like we do where you just turn on the blades and it, and it cleans everything up. So what you need to look through is, is there anything in the run that the chickens could have ingested that would jam up their crop. That's basically not the normal thing or not the normal shape and size of stuff that they're supposed to be eating. So you don't want to give them a lot of long blades of stuff, whether it's fresh, you know, it's green and it's soft, or especially if it's dried, right? Like hay. Um, so to really, really avoid that if possible, you need to look around and make sure there's not any kind of rubber, plastic, um, anything from like those old weed barriers that might be in the ground, um, you know, zip ties, little things like that. I mean, every once in a while, if the chicken thinks that it's a worm or it's a bug, they'll grab it up real quick before somebody else can. And then they kind of realize like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. So be looking around at all of that kind of stuff. The other thing to be aware of is that moldy feed can cause sauerkraut. Get out of my plants, you creep moldy feed can cause sour crop because obviously they just ate something that had all of that on it. Um, so moldy feed can be a problem. And the last thing that can be a problem is if you don't offer them grit. Um, I've got videos here if you want to look up grit. I mean, honestly, if they're out and they've got space like this and they're not just in like a little like coop and run setup, like if they've got some space, chances are they're out finding grit like all day, every day. Remember, chickens are snackers. They don't eat like three meals a day or like a big predator. I eat one meal a week and then I just kind of chill. They're always snacking and trying to eat stuff. So chances are they're already finding little pieces of snail shell or little pieces of rock or, you know, anything that's around just little things because that's the equivalent of like the teeth and the grinding system in their digestive system. So keep an eye on all of those things for sour crop and impacted crop. I'm going to start, I'm going to isolate Minerva. I'm going to go grab that bottle and I'm going to do one more quick clip here. This is... The Bragg is the brand. You can see it at the top, the raw unfiltered apple cider vinegar. It has the mother. What they call the mother is, I don't know how well you can see it, but yeah, see, it's all the dark stuff that's in there. And then you shake it up real well. And then you put one tablespoon per gallon of water in it. So she's not going to need that much. She's going to have her own waterer. But we're hoping in another day or two to really see some difference. It'll take a couple days for this to totally resolve. But the goal is going to be like, I'm just going to take some pictures of Minerva today. And then I'm going to leave her isolated all day. And hoping that tomorrow morning that she is going to, there's going to be a significant difference of her being able to empty out her crop. So that sour crop, which is soft an impacted crop, which is hard, and some things that you can have on hand and some things that you can do at home. As always, I welcome questions and comments down below. Again, I apologize for all of the noise. It's going to get so hot today, and I got to get Minerva in her little isolation coop that's over here by a VTuvin, and of course, now the air conditioning shuts off that I'm done, but put questions and comments, remedies and things down in the, um, the, down in the video comments. Um, I'm happy to help. Here's my email address, and hopefully we're going to have a success story to tell you about before long. Thanks.